One of the most important things you need to get on a soil test is base saturation. We'll talk about why today and help you understand what the components of base saturation are. Well, base saturation really lets you know what's going on in your soil in terms of a balance of nutrients. If you're way overloaded on one or you're way short on another, it kind of lets you focus in on certain problems on your farm. Now with base saturation, it doesn't tell you exactly what rates you need to apply of fertilizer or anything like that. You still need the rest of your soil test to help you out with those kind of things, but it will give you an indication of where to look for problems and where you can start gaining some Okay, yield. so basically it's a ratio of five different nutrients. These are cations. They're very important in plants, and we wanted to talk about what they each are and the range that we would like to see. Let's just take them one at a time, Brian. First of all, let's look at calcium. This is the one that we would like to see at about 65 to even 80% of base saturation. And with calcium, there's a couple of things about it. It's a large molecule. So when you have lots of calcium in your soil, that's usually a good thing because now you're gonna leave a little bit of breathing room around those particles. Think about it this way. If you have a room full of beach balls, will you still be able to breathe if you're in that room? Well, yeah, probably because there's gonna be a lot of air around those big particles. But if you have a room full of sand, tiny little particles, you won't be able to breathe. It's the same thing in your soil. That's why we like a lot of calcium. Okay, so calcium is, or should be, the highest number there. And we want that number relatively high, again, 65 to 80%. The next nutrient is magnesium. That number, if it gets very high, then we've got some problems. Well, I like to see that in the 15 to 22% range, maybe 25, that's kind of pushing a little bit in my opinion, but you want to see that relatively low. Your crop definitely needs the magnesium, yeah. but too much can be a bad thing. This is another one of those really small particles that when you've got a lot of magnesium, you get tight soils that are just sticky and, and are hard to drain. So with magnesium, I personally like to see it in the 12 to 25% range. If it's less than 12, we've got a problem and that usually will happen in sandier soils in our part of the country. We have montmorillonite clay as the base material in a lot of the soils in the northern US. And with that montmorillonite clay comes magnesium. So we get our magnesium for free, don't even have to fertilize with it, that's a great thing. If we're excessive of 25%, usually that means we do have a poorly drained soil hurting our overall availability of potassium and some other nutrients so we don't like to have that number too high either so again the ideal range that we're looking for with magnesium is about 12 to 25 percent now you mentioned potassium there and it's not like magnesium directly hurts potassium but we're talking about a ratio here there's only a hundred percent so if you have more percentage in magnesium that means less percentage can be in the other things all right i'm stopping you right there because i disagree a hundred percent with you, magnesium does directly impact potassium. If I've got that magnesium, and we see it in some soils, 40, 50% magnesium, we have absolutely limited the amount of potassium that's gonna get into that plant. Even though I might have a lot of parts per million out there, I just can't get enough potassium into that plant when my potassium is below the 4% range. We wanna see potassium in the four to 8% range. It's incredibly critical, and I get tired of seeing people talk about, well, I've got 250 50 parts per million of potassium. I'm in great shape. Well, we don't know that necessarily because if your soil is overloaded on calcium and it's overloaded on magnesium, that 250 parts per million on potassium might only give you a 2% base saturation percentage. And then I can guarantee you when you do plant tissue analysis later on in the season, you're gonna find at some point potassium deficiencies. Well, I don't think we're disagreeing at all, Brian. I think we're just looking at it two different ways here. And I do agree with what you're saying. It's just not like magnesium ties up potassium. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't do that. It's just that when you have lots and lots of magnesium, you've got to have lots and lots of potassium out there as well. Otherwise, there's just not enough to actually get into the plant. So again, make sure your potassium level is in the four to 8% range. That is ultra critical. One of the most important things you need on a soil test. All right, the last two factors with base saturation, we want them both low hydrogen and sodium. With hydrogen, we'd like that to be 10% or less. And anytime you start getting up around 10% hydrogen, what that's telling you is you have an acid soil. You have a low pH. And when you put out lime, you have to remember what lime is. It's calcium carbonate. And when you put that calcium carbonate up, the chemical reaction that happens in your soil, if you have a low pH acid soil, is you're gonna have more free calcium created and hydrogen is gonna go away. So you're gonna see that hydrogen go down, you're gonna see your soil pH go up, and you're gonna see your calcium go up. Okay, so when that base saturation percentage on hydrogen 
exceeds 10%, usually that means our soil pH is down around 6.3 or less, and that's about the point that we want you to start applying lime. So we want to see that base saturation at 10% or less with hydrogen. With sodium, we want to see the base saturation at 1% or less. Well, again, sodium is a nutrient that our plants need. They just need a tiny little bit of it. They don't need very much. And the problem is, if let's say you add 2%, well, now you've got twice as much as you need, and excessive is never a good thing when it comes to crop production. We don't want excessive nutrients. That can hurt us more than it can help us. So if you have excessive sodium out there, you are going to be hurting your yields. And if you have that high sodium, then you need to do a few things. One, if you're applying manure, you're probably applying too much. Two, if you're applying high salt fertilizer, I would cut back on that as well. And three, if you've got a lot of sodium out there, this is a nutrient that could leach out of your soils. Typically when you have salt compounds, they move with water. And if you're having a drainage issue out there, this could be a reason for a buildup in salts. So you may need to improve your drainage. Well, once again, base saturation is a ratio of five different nutrients in your soil. It is super important on a soil test. It's one of the very first things we always look at. You wanna have those percentages in the right ranges so you get maximum availability and maximum yield. Well, that's great, Brian, but you won't get maximum yield without perfect weed control. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show.